Bubble sort or sinking sort is a naive approach like I described before. You'll go through your array comparing elements side by side and switching them whenever necessary. Let me illustrate with a quick example. We'll start at the beginning and we'll compare the first two elements. If the first element is bigger than the second one, we'll switch them. Great, we've made one switch, so now we can move on over to the next two elements. Looks like we need a switch here as well. All right, now we can move along to the next two elements. And again, looks like our first element is bigger than our second one, so we'll need to switch. Okay, now we can compare the last two elements in the array. And once again, the first element is bigger than the second one, so we'll need to switch. All right, now we're done with this round. Okay, now that we've passed through the array one time, we should count up the number of comparisons we needed. It took us four comparisons to get through five elements. I think it's safe to say that our runtime for this step was n minus one, since the array size was five. So with our n minus one comparisons, what actually changed? The array's still not actually sorted, but it looks a little bit better now. The largest element, eight, moved up to the end of the array where it belongs. This is actually why this method is called bubble sort. In each iteration, the largest element in the array will bubble on up to the top. So by that logic, in the next iteration, the number seven should bubble up to right below eight. Let's repeat the process. Again, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up to the top. Looks like we need to switch on our first step. Let's move to step two now. It looks like we actually don't need to flip these two for the first time. This first element is actually less than that second element, so we have nothing to do. Awesome. We do need to flip seven and zero though, and the last two elements are in order, so no work here. Again, we had to do four steps, which is still n minus one. Okay, now we're going to have to do two more rounds of this, but I don't want to bore you with the details. Let me show you what the next iteration of comparisons looks like. I did another iteration, but not much has changed. I just had to flip the three and the zero to look like this. Again, the biggest element left, three, bubbled up to the place it belongs, but we still have work to do. And again, note that this took four steps, so n minus one steps. We only have one iteration left. Let me show you what that looks like. This time we only had to flip the zero and the one and we're done.